Welcome back to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down tools, toys and appliances just to find out what's inside. I'm David and hopefully you're a repeat viewer and you'll have already seen when we tore down the acorn that Katie donated to us. And you'll have seen all of the horrible corrosion that basically destroyed it. And I made a very sweeping statement, something like this. If you've got an old bit of hardware that you've got stashed away somewhere that you are emotionally attached to or you think might be rare or even just you think might be interesting for somebody in the future and you're not capable of recapping it, get it to someone who is. Let's keep as much of this hardware surviving as much as possible. So in the interest of not being a hypocrite, I thought it was about time I dug out this old Xbox and replaced the supercapacitor. Now if that doesn't make any sense to you, don't worry, we'll cover it. But let's get inside it first. Now, I'm very sad to say I never actually owned one of these original Xboxes. I never actually owned anything from this generation at all, which would have been uh, the PlayStation 2, the original Xbox and the Wii. I somehow missed this generation and went straight from an N64 to a PlayStation 3. But that means I don't have a great deal of experience with the hardware, definitely. But this one was given to me and uh, it does work and let's keep it that way, frankly. There's a couple of cheeky warranty void style, which to be honest, Considering this console came out in 2001, I don't think it's got much of a warranty left that we can uh, invalidate. So let's start with a nice big Torx bit. And this is a strange one because I'm guessing a lot of the viewers have probably got more of a clue of hardware inside of here than I do. And this at the moment is stock and factory. I'd be quite interested to give it a try, giving it an HDMI mod and an SSD mod. I think that'd be fun and see how playable we can make old school hardware. Now, the other thing about this Xbox is it came with one of the, the Duke controllers, the huge ones that unless you were a six foot four adult didn't fit comfortably in your hand. And I, th I feel like that's crying out for some sort of mod or turning into a portable console. What do you think? Would you be interested in just seeing mods to the Xbox or would you like to see a mod with the controller? Let me know over at the Element 14 community. It's by far and away the easiest place to get in touch with me. Send some ideas over. Hey, top cover hides a load of RF shielding and that wonderfully iconic Xbox design, which is cool. I definitely like that. So we have an ID. Wow, this is really clean inside for something that was used a lot, but Never taken apart, I'm surprised. So IDE hard drive, first console to ship with a hard drive on it. PlayStation 2 had it as an optional upgrade, but it wasn't stock. Magnetic screwdrivers, risky around hard drives, but very, very useful. Get the Molex connector off the hard drive. And that's a specialist power connector for the DVD drive, but otherwise a standard, I think it's called a Conductor 40 IDE ribbon. Um, which wasn't capable of the higher speed, which was 133 megabits a second. This was only the slower one, but you could get two devices on the same bus, which requires only one conductor on the motherboard. Uh, don't need to touch the hard drive, full size three and a half inch hard drive or the uh, DVD drive. Bit of RF shielding came off the front of the DVD drive while we were there. Okay, it was actually keyed. Yes, that's keyed. That's fine. Power for the hard drive. Oh, plastic clips on the heatsink. So that's a 733 megahertz Pentium 3 NVIDIA graphics. I can't remember if that's part of the graphics chip or whether that's memory controllers, which is weird that even then the Xbox was Intel or, or x86 instruction set, which means that the Xbox went from the first generation of x86, then they went to PowerPC for the Xbox 360, then they went to x86 or actually x64, which is an extension of x86, but a 64-bit instruction set um, for the Xbox One and of course the Xbox One X. So they were a generation earlier coming back. No, it was the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 with the same generation when the PlayStation went to the power PC architecture, sorry, cell broadband, whereas the Xbox 360 went to power PC. Uh, so this, this was released in 2001 and was re 
um, superseded by the Xbox 360 in 2006, but they returned for the Xbox One in, what, 2014-ish? Something along those lines? Which is interesting. So they went away from Intel around the netburst architecture, which is, for anybody not apparently super nerdy on PC architecture, um, that's around the Pentium 4, Pentium D, uh, I think they called it the Pentium HT, the hyper-threading. Um, and the, the Pentium 4 was known for being very hot and very power hungry. So it makes sense that at that point, Power PC or even the broad, cell broadband of the PlayStation 3 made a bit more sense. So you didn't have to have these enormous heat sinks and yet the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 both still had overheating problems. If you remember, was it the three ring, three lights of death? And the PlayStation 3 had like a flashing ring of death or something. Interesting that the power supply is a bare board in here. Um, I had still expected that to be in some sort of can or something just to reduce interference. This is a switch mode power supply. This is all going to be high frequency noisy stuff and there's no shielding down here to prevent noise being emitted to the motherboard. That seems like a strange choice to me but I'm sure it worked. Okay, so there's a little bit of dust in here. Nothing too bad, nothing too worrisome. What I'm really interested in is the capacitors because apparently from the late 90s through the 2010, up to about 2010, there was an industry issue with capacitors and capacitor quality. Um, and it was a time when the big name brand capacitors that had been around for generations started to lose out to cheaper mass manufacturing and the quality plummeted. Now the Xbox in particular suffered um, because they decided to do away with the little CR2032 type 3.3 volt system battery running their system clock to a supercapacitor. And unfortunately that supercapacitor is well known for dying and killing the board, which is the key reason I wanted to open this up so I could replace that capacitor if nothing else. But since I'm in here, these caps are looking a little bit bulgy and suspicious. So it looks like although I'm definitely replacing the super capacitor today, I think I'm ordering an entire recap kit for this. I mean, it's funny to me that that's that looks, although it's missing a lot of pins, like that is a standard a old school ATX connector. So the ATX connector started at 20 pins and then they added four more and it became 20 plus four. And then I think they added four more after that. And then you ended up with motherboards that were so power hungry, they had their own four connectors as well. It got very hungry very quickly. So that's the front panel for the lights and the buttons. And these are the controller ports. And again, am I gonna, since I've got this open and since I'm doing other work on this board, I think I'm probably going to take the effort to taking the heat sinks off, replacing the thermal interface material. You know, cheaper thermal interface materials are basically grease or oil based and they do dry out and that can result in overheating. Normally these machines have got enough to sort of thermally throttle and control so they don't damage themselves, but you don't want to be constantly shutting down on over temperature and risk damaging the machine. So since we've got this open, we may as well replace the thermal interface material. And also, I love the fact that this came with a network card built in. I know the PS2 Slim also came with a network card, but I don't think it made particularly good use of it, certainly not out of the box. Whereas the Xbox was kind of designed around the online gameplay from the get-go. At least that's my memory of it. Which makes it a bit of a flagship in some response, in some some ways. And you've got to bear in mind, this was opening into, I think this was classed as the sixth generation of console. So uh, Sega, Nintendo had been around for a long time and they'd made a really good go of this. But the fact that Xbox rolled up on the scene with high-end PC components, network connectivity and online services, it's a big move. Well, it's not too bad, but this board could definitely do with a cleanup. These caps definitely need changing. We've already got a replacement for the supercapacitor. Not looking too bad other than these three up here. 
Uh oh, spoke too soon. Is that water damage or are those evidence of leaking caps? I think it might be. I think we may have got here just in time. Definite evidence of either water damage or caps starting to leak. And fortunately, I think we've got to this just in time where I can clean this all up and it's not gonna be an issue. Thank goodness. There you go. If we ever needed it, there's another lesson on why you should check your old electronics. Please, 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 if you've got something old that you think is gonna last, get someone who knows what they're doing to look at it and assess it. And if you can, or they can, recap it. Certainly from this era, this the, the late 90s to early 2000s and 2010, the caps were terrible. They need checking. Get someone to check them, please. Since we're here, let's take the heat sinks off. Oh, that's right. The GPU heat sinks actually sort of glued on, whereas this one's just thermal interface material. And yeah, it, it's, it's not too bad, but it could do with replacing. So there you go. Recap, re-tim. Look after your electronics, people. So all this just to check on that super capacitor, and it turns out it was just in time to perhaps save this entire board from being eaten through by corrosion. If you've got something old or something that might be rare or even just something you care about, especially from this era, please get it checked out. Get it to somebody who knows what they're doing, get it recapped, get it looked at. Save it, please. Looks like I've got a long night of uh, desoldering ahead of me so I can then work out which capacitors I need to reorder. If you're interested in seeing more on this Xbox, maybe an HDMI mod or an SSD mod, let me know over at the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash the electronics inside. We probably won't make a full episode out of just more desoldering capacitors and recapping, but we'll probably throw some extra content over there with a list of parts and some experience that I might gain. Either way, it's worth signing up to if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.